today for one reason. That's to let the Tories know that we know that these cuts are not inevitable. They are ideologically driven. They're designed to cut out the heart of the welfare state. Designed to make us pay for the banker-driven crisis. This Tory Lib Dem government of millionaires plan these savage cuts in the hope of promoting sentiment and confidence in the market. They want to go back to things the way they were, but there is no going back. The capitalist model is not fit for purpose. They may say they're bowing to international pressure, but it is the IMF that should be under pressure. Economists warn us that these cuts will be counterproductive and will lead us into a spiral of economic decline. Already, youth unemployment is increasing and has almost doubled in two years. The future job funds is now cut. We currently still have 2.8 million children in poverty and half of those have a working adult in their home. We still have 2.8 million pensioners in fuel poverty and pension levels are disgracefully low. The question that we need to answer first is not how to pay for this deficit, but what sort of society do we want to live in? We can keep the NHS public, nationalise the railways, save the universal postal service under the Royal Mail, provide a good comprehensive system and free further and higher education for our schools and for our universities and colleges. But right now, we need to challenge the radical onslaught of these condemned government cuts. So we must stand together, organise together, women, men, young and older, the strong and the vulnerable, without allowing racists to divide our communities. Green, red, all who oppose these budget cuts, let's work together in a coalition of resistance.